In this video, we're gonna talk about the third part of the Sharia law, which is hygiene. Someone might say, wait a minute, didn't you say that Sharia law was the secret recipe that transformed the Arabs from ignorant tribes into world leaders and started the Islamic Golden Age? Is hygiene really related to the prosperity of society? And the answer is yes, hygiene is the first step. We've seen together the degeneracy of the Arabs before the message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you missed this episode, I will link it in the description below. It's very important that you see it first. The Prophet had to do the impossible. The Prophet had to step by step change the behavior and the habits of the whole society. After watching this episode and the next couple of episodes in the Sharia series, you will understand why Prophet Muhammad is number one in the world most influential men in history by Michael Hart. Enough with the introduction, let's start right away. Hygiene. The first solution to the hygiene problem was wudu. Every Muslim is required to perform wudu or ablution minimum five times per day. Actually, the recommended number of times is much more than that, but this is the minimum. So what is wudu? Quran chapter 5 verse 6. O you who have believed, when you rise to perform your prayer, wash your faces and your forearms to the elbows, wipe over your heads and wash your feet to the ankles and if you are in the state of Janaba, then purify yourself. Bismillah. I wash my hands three times. I wash my mouth three times. I wash my nose three times. I wash my face three times. I wash my arms to my elbows three times. I wipe my hair and my ears one time. I wash my feet to my ankles three times. This is a minimum obligation. Of course, the recommendation is much more than that. And also the Prophet recommended that with every wudu, we should clean our teeth and clean our mouth from the inside and clear our nose from the inside. But you will say that's not enough because you need a full shower. And yes, of course, you're not gonna take a full shower five times every day. The minimum requirement to take a full shower is once every week. According to this hadith, it is obligated on every Muslim that he should take a full shower minimum once every seven days to wash his full head and his full body. And also, we're required to do full shower after any sexual intercourse. Also, we have this hadith. The Prophet said that every Friday it's recommended for every man to take a full shower to put his perfume and then go to the mosque to pray his prayer and in return God will forgive his sins between this Friday prayer and the last Friday prayer. Okay, then was that enough? Actually no. There were people doing very bad behavior, like for example public urination, as we see right now in a lot of countries and it was fixed by this hadith. Cursed are those who are urinating in the roads and in the shades. Shades means trees. And there were people who were not cleaning themselves after going to the bathroom. And this was fixed by this hadith. Clean yourself from your urine because a lot of people are tortured after they die because of that. And also this hadith, being clean is part of faith. There are a lot of verses in the Quran, God himself showing how he appreciates and loves people who purify themselves and clean their bodies. For example, the people in the mosque of Qiba, they made a rule on themselves that they are cleaning themselves after every bathroom with water, not with toilet paper. So God actually revealed a verse in the Quran stating how much he loves these people in this mosque. There are people who love to clean themselves and God loves people who love to clean themselves. God loves people who repent a lot and God loves people who clean themselves a lot. And this is why in every Muslim household in the whole world, you will find this invention. This invention is supposed to help you clean yourself after finishing bathroom. And you might say, well, toilet paper is enough. But if, if you look at this demonstration, you will see that no matter how much you try to clean with toilet paper, it, it's, I, I don't know, I, I don't wanna watch it because I don't wanna vomit, 
But as you can see, when we did the same experiment with water, using water is a no-brainer. This is why even us Muslims, when we travel to a country who are not used to cleaning themselves, we take a portable BD with us. Because like, there is no way we can stay in this country for a couple of days without this. This is literally the best selling product in the airport. And I know that big companies are controlling the media and media is brainwashing people, but you know what? This is a big sacrifice from the whole community to not clean themselves and be like that just for a paper towel company to gain some money. Wake up, guys. People clean themselves, the disciples of the Prophet, but not all of them put a lot of effort into looking good, you know? So he would find someone who's not like taking care of his clothes, taking care of his hair. He's, he's clean, he took a shower, but he looks, you know, not nice. So we have hadith like this, for example. The Prophet saw a man not taking care of his hair. He commented on him. He, he said, can't you find something to style your hair with? And he found another man with his clothes dirty. It has a lot of dust and sand in it because, you know, it's a desert environment. And he commented, he said, can't you find some water to clean your clothes? Like, don't look bad when you are around people. Try to look as nice as you can. Also in this other hadith, if you have hair, then take care of it. Prophet also says, God is beautiful and he loves beauty. So take care of how you look. Of course, I'm not talking about women wearing seductive clothes and calling it beautiful. I'm, I'm not talking about that. Also from this verse in the Quran, O oh, children of Adam, take your adornments at every masjid. Masjid is a mosque. And, and by the way, ma masjid is uh, not only a place of worship. Masjid is a meeting place. If people want to meet and discuss social issues, they meet in the masjid. So whenever you are in a gathering with people, adorn yourself. Wear something nice. So now people are showering minimum once or twice every week. People are cleaning their extremities five times minimum every day, maybe 10. And people are taking care of their clothes and their hair. How about perfume? So we have hadith like this. Perfume was one of the most beloved things to the Prophet and he never smelled bad in his life. Also this hadith. This is Anas ibn Malik saying, I have never in my life smelled something better than the perfumes that the Prophet peace be upon him was putting on. Also this hadith, Aisha, said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to use the best types of perfume and also put it on his head and on his beard. Also, from this hadith, we understand that we shouldn't smell bad, even if it's something halal. Like, for example, sometimes people would come to the masjid for prayer or for a meeting, and they have eaten a lot of onion and garlic. So when you, whenever they speak, their breath smells like onion and garlic, and this hurts others who don't like the smell. So the Prophet said, before the meeting, before the prayer, don't do that. And if we think about it, now some people actually smell like smoking. Whenever they go to a meeting, they hurt others around them, which is also bad. So now everyone is showering and doing wudu five times per day and cleaning their clothes and their hair and putting perfume. So what's next? Clean your teeth. The Prophet said that I recommend that you brush your teeth after every prayer. And when they asked Aisha, what did the Prophet do the moment he enters his house? She said he usually started by brushing his teeth. Still wanna know more? Check this hadith. If you yawn or sneeze, put your hand over your mouth. The Prophet, peace be upon him, every time he sneezed, he covered his face. Is there something else? Yeah. Remember that we we're talking about the society before the invention of soap and shampoo and all of this stuff. So you usually clean yourself with water only. And yes, they are cleaning themselves a lot, but still there is no sanitizers, there is no face masks, right? So diseases can also spread. He came up with a genius idea. He said, from now on, whole society will use right hand for some purposes and the left hand for other purposes. Everyone is to use his right hand when he eats, his right hand when he checks uh, 
someone else's hand his right hand when he showers like any any clean action is done with the right hand however when i go to the bathroom and i'm cleaning myself after the bathroom i use my left hand so when i meet someone in the street i shake hands with him with the right hand i am sure that the maximum dirt that touched this hand is food. Of course, there would be an exception for someone who's lefty, but imagine this teaching before the creation of sanitizers and alcohol and soap. This teaching alone might prevent a lot of viruses from spreading in the society. And while we're talking about viruses, let's talk about pandemics. Let's talk about something like coronavirus, or if we go back, the plague. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said when you're facing a pandemic, if the pandemic is in a city, don't go there. And if the pandemic is in your city, don't get out of it. You're gonna hurt other people if you get out of it. It's your destiny, stay in your city. So the recommendations that we got from the World Health Organization to stop the spread of the pandemic, actually it is in Hadith books 1,400 years ago. Finally, we want to talk about hygiene at home. So it's not only look nice and be clean and smell nice when you're outside. No, you're actually obligated to do the same at home with your family or if you are alone, just stay clean all the time. This hadith, for example, says, whoever is clean at home until he sleeps, an angel prays for him to God saying, God forgive your servant, he slept while he was clean. So the point is what, don't be clean and look nice in the morning while you are with people, but when you go home before you sleep, you look disgusting. No, this is not the point. You stay clean until you sleep. This hadith, for example, whoever went to sleep while he is still clean and pure, whenever he asks God or makes dua to God, God will love him and will more likely accept his dua. Also from the recommendations of the Prophet in this hadith, cutting the mustache, letting go of the beard, brushing your teeth, cleaning your nose from inside, cutting your nails. وغسل البراغم, it means when you clean your hand, take care of the small parts, like between the fingers and stuff. Natful uh, Abit is removing the hair under the armpit and removing the hair in the private parts and cleaning yourself with water after every bathroom not with toilet paper and finally al madmada which is cleaning your mouth from the inside with water and we also learned from ibn abbas he said i adorn myself to my wife the same way she adorns herself to me so it's not for the woman only to look nice for her husband the husband also should look nice for his wife he was doing that because the verse in chapter 2 verse 228 due to them is similar to what is expected from them In the next episode, we're gonna talk about food. And yes, the Sharia law has a lot of rules about food. Sharia fixes a lot of social issues and health issues when it comes to food consumption. We're gonna talk about it in details. Wait for it, it will be a very, very nice episode. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss it. And Muslim brothers and sisters, if you wanna help our Dawah project and help the word of God spread to the world, the more you engage with the video with likes or shares or comments, the more YouTube will suggest it to other people. And if you wanna support us financially, we will leave donation links under the video. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.